Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Jeremy Scrivens here uh, for another sort of conversation around the emotional economy at work. And the reason for this particular video this morning is very simple. Um, to be honest with you, I'm having an absolute ball uh, in, in being involved in, in writing and speaking and, and thinking about what we're now call, calling the future of work or FOW. It's a big buzzword on Twitter, FOW or hashtag FOW. Um, and it's connected with words like collaboration and, and, and innovation um, and co-creativity and disruption and words like that. And so a lot of that stuff uh, uh, makes, well, it's beginning to make a lot more sense to me now in terms of, of, of what that means for the future of work in the ordinary business, uh, what it means to actually uh, to, 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 to adopt these, these different words and these different new ways of thinking about work to grow business because now it's all about growth not just survival even though uh, I think obviously you still need to have uh, business uh, processes and, and, and uh, you know, decisions in place that, that to protect your business but the big idea now is around growth another, another word is startup so the world of work is moving very very quickly so I've been doing a lot of work thinking around you know, what it means in terms of thought leading in this space and, and being quite excited, a little bit surprised to, to get this very positive reaction to, you know, some of the things I'm talking about and writing about now. Um, and, and a couple of people recently um, have been saying to me, Jeremy, you know, this, what, you, what you're talking about and what you're writing about is really interesting, but do you actually help organisations? Do you actually get inside companies? Do you actually work with the CEOs and the teams? and actually help and coach these guys uh, to install the future of work in their own organisations. Um, and to be honest, um, that's what I love doing. I love doing that even more than the writing and even more than the thought leadership, because if you think about it, you know, what I write about are the experiences that come from working with organisations uh, in, in the space of, of um, you know, helping their organisation, helping their companies to grow and to set up for the future. So the answer is yeah, and I realised that, that, you know, um, I was having a conversation, a cup of coffee with someone the other day, and I said, well, Jeremy, you know, there's a lot of stuff written around the future of work and, and digital and social. A lot of, lot of the big guys in the big, massive multi-corporates, they kind of get this, you know, they're, kind of, they're sort of sophisticated people and they kind of, you know, um, yeah, spend millions of bucks on this and they have big IT teams and they have lots of different people, experts in this and that. But what about the ordinary, smaller, Business guys, what about the CEO of a you know company that's thirty or forty or hundred? Not, not not talking about a technology startup here, but talking about a company that's starting out. Might even be a retail store or a clothing company, or fresh produce business, or a farm, a cherry farm, for example, um, or a small manufacturing company, or it might be aged care, um, or or it might be some sort of community services type type operation. Anything to do with people? What about these guys here who are? Being bombarded now with with this idea of social business and digital and you know and all the digital technologies and big data and what does this stuff actually mean? Uh, and when they go and talk to some of the big big providers, of course, those price tags are way way out of their range. So, and to be honest with you, it's only more recently. And my background is big corporate Telstra for for ten years in the nineties. Um, now, now having conversations with some some of the big players in Australia and globally. But the last eight or nine years, the work I've been doing, which formed uh, my understanding of the future of work, has been in much smaller organisations, a mushroom farm with 50 or 60 people, fresh produce business with about, 50, about 70 or 80, um, a, um, a business involved in airline catering with eight or 900 people, but not 10 to 1,000 or 100,000. And the exciting thing about working with organisations of that size is that you get you get to be able to make differences incredibly quickly, because you don't have all that bureaucratic stuff and all the hierarchies and the massiveness to deal with. So you can actually um, install the future of work incredibly effectively and very quickly in a very short period of time. And the other thing that was said to me was, you know, Jeremy, all this stuff seems so complicated. It seems so hard, you know. And how do we get started in in in, in the future of work? How do we get started in, in applying the, these new sort of concepts of work? How do we engage people? 
how do we innovate together? Just how do you do this stuff? And we're business, we, we, we've got to get our heads down each day and we've got to keep stuff going. Just how do we do this? Um, it seems very hard, but you know what? It'll be the easiest work you've ever done in your life. And I find now with, with, this, with the approaches that we adopt towards, um, towards restoring the future of work, it is quite honestly the easiest work I've ever done and it's exciting and it's um, very, 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 it's fun and it's also very profitable. So in the, sh in, in the next few minutes basically I, I wanted to just give a quick overview around some ideas and some very practical steps of what it means for me or my colleagues to come in and work with an organisation. If you're a small to medium sized business, I mean we work with the large corporates as well, but to be honest our heart, my heart is for the smaller guys because this is where most people are, are working in Australia. That's where, where I learnt about, about this new future of work. And if we can do it in a mushroom farm or a fresh produce business, we can do it anyway. Just a bit of context. What, what is the future of work? What does it actually mean? What is it? Well, there's a num number, number of different threads here. The first is the idea of innovation. So, so what we're seeing now is a shift, a fundamental business shift from continuous improvement the last, to innovation. The last 15, 20 years has been all about continuous improvement. So, 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 so we deploy things like Lean and, and Six Sigma and process improvement, uh, risk management and all sorts of things, uh, quality and whatever, all designed to basically um, keep improving. That's, that's improving or what's already there. And what's now happening is that we're seeing a massive focus on innovation, which is creating new value, or a buzzword now is creating social good. Gary Hamill, who's probably the world's greatest thinker on the future of work and in business, has said that we're now living in an age where we're moving beyond continuous improvement and into innovation. And he basically says, innovate or die. So, so therefore innovation, which used to be thought of as something that, that only sort of the smart techies do or that um, the, 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 the originators do and the rest of us follow, is now actually something that every company needs to have as their source um, it's part of their source DNA. So, so there's, a, there's a culture of innovation uh, that's happening. Can you imagine, can you imagine what it would mean for your organisation? Because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions in a minute. Because I'm assuming I'm talking to a CEO now of a small to medium sized business or, 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 or an owner or a director or a senior exec. Can you imagine what it would mean to be able to install a, 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 a culture of continuous innovation? continuous creativity, where, where not just the, the, the smart guys in your organisation, not just the, the professionals, but everyone on the ground floor innovates continuously. Can you imagine the power of that? That's what we do. That's what we actually install, and that's what will help you to put in place. Um, so innovation, how do, you, how, do you, how do you, what's important what, in terms of the capability of innovation? What do you need? Gert Hamill says, and he's absolutely right here, that the core driver in innovation is the idea of co-creation, that is that you do it together. You do it with all your people. You, you deploy all their strengths, all their ideas. You get them in what we call the rooms together. And so you, you release the, what we call the power of the whole, which is the ability to, to be able to tap into all the resources you've got, which in fact are already sitting um, in your organisation, the strengths of your people. In order to do that, he says, and again, he's quite right in my experience, you've got to have an engaged workforce. Um, and engaged means that people are engaged from the heart, um, from the heart and from the head, both. A lot of engagement in the past has been around head stuff, rational stuff. You know, how, how do we engage people, what we call it extrinsically, which is around money and, and cars and you know, benefits and so on, all good stuff maybe having a nice computer, but the heart is, is around purpose and meaning. It's a deep need, need in the human being to feel that work is meaningful and is making a difference and to, and, and to share and to collaborate. So you hear buzzwords like sharing and collaboration now, that, that, that appeals to the human heart. So engagement is vital to this. And when you get an engaged workforce that's truly engaged, you get collaboration. You get a, a desire to collaborate because what happens is when people are engaged from who they are, and they're able to be themselves at work, and the whole of them themselves are engaged, if you like, you see this incredible new conversation emerge, which is based on authenticity and trust. So another thing that we do very quickly in any organisation you work with, whether it's 20 people or five or 600, 
is to find out what are the unique characteristics of your organisation or your company that enable people to experience trust or authenticity and then to have a conversation and move forward in how to make that the normal culture. You can imagine what it would be like if your business, if your trust levels are so high that you could actually focus more on that which you wish to accomplish rather than that which you wish to avoid. Think about that. That's what we do, help we shift that balance. Um, so, so the notion then of, of engagement is critical. Just in terms of engagement, Hamill says also that engagement used to be optional as a discussion for organisations or businesses. Now it's absolutely the main game. And again, he's quite right. Just give you some quick figures on this. And as I, as I share these, these, these figures with you, I just want you to, to think about this in the context for, um, for your own business. According to Gallup, who do some of the biggest surveys on engagement in the world, only 13%, that's right, 1-3% of the world's workforce is engaged right now in work. Can you believe that? Only 13%, about 60% are not engaged, and about another 15 to 18% or whatever it is are actually disengaged. And those guys, and I use three terms for those different types. Contributors, the engaged people, the compliance, not engaged, and the subversives, the disengaged. The contributors are the ones who are fired up, they're passionate, they're engaged from the heart and the head, they collaborate, they share, they give, they're generous, they've got ideas, uh, they're an incredible asset to your organisation. Every organisation, every business has contributors. Think about it, you've got contributors. But then there are com the compliance, the ones who don't rock up to work and they basically do an okay job, they go home. They don't go the extra mile, they don't, they don't innovate, they don't initiate, they don't collaborate. And so there's a whole lot being held back. Here's a question for you. you think about the, 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 the compliance in your workforce. Do you have compliance? I bet you do. Imagine if those compliance became contributors. Imagine where uh, the, the pilot light that's been switched on but not in flame. Imagine if that was turned on to its full power. And imagine if those guys became fired up again and were able to bring those guys together in a conversation around co-creativity and innovation, where they could take a journey with you into the future of work. That's what we do. That's what we help you to do in your business. So, so there's, there's the idea, so some ideas, innovation, um, engagement, uh, collaboration, co-creativity, they're all, all sort of tied up together. Where do you start? If I sit down uh, with you having a cup of coffee and you say, Jeremy, I've got a business, I've got 50 people, 500 people, we're doing well, but we want to move to the next stage, we want to take advantage of, of, of this idea of digital, we know it's about being able to engage a, a wider a business, um, influence through social, we know that, they, that, are, that there are young, young guys coming into the workforce now, want to be engaged, we want to use the technology. Um, how do we do it? Where do we start? Do we start with buying? So what's happening is a lot of, a lot of, everywhere I go now, there are people investing in social and digital technologies. Not a bad thing to do, but guess what? You, they're buying the technologies, they're buying the software, they're buying the big data before they have had a conversation with their people around engagement. So what happens is they're spending all this money basically installing it and then saying to, to people, you collaborate now guys, or you use digital, or you use big data, and everyone just sits there silently because they've not been engaged with, with, with a much bigger idea, which is developing the story. Your business, you got in business to make a difference. Yes, you got in business to make money. Yes, you got in the business to make a profit. That's an output. It's a, res it's a result of something much more important, which is the contribution you're making to to society, the social good, the value that you create to your customers, to your stakeholders, that's how you make the money. The only difference now between the old work and the future work is the future of work requires new value to be created uh, in lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot quicker, but also at scale, which means many different people want to be engaged and connected into, the, into your journey. So it's not about the technology first, it's about who you are. You start the, the, this whole future of work uh, conversation and journey around who you are, not the technology. So what we know, here's a couple of very practical things. And if, you do, if, we, did, did this, if we did this in your organisation and only this, it would make a massive change. 
it would to use a, a buzzword, it would disrupt, positively disrupt um, your business right now and take you to the next chapter of your story because it's all about your story, supported by the technology. For years and years, people were taught the problem-solving approach to, to running a business. Yeah. Look, at, look at the business and people's problems. So, for example, we say 87% of the workforce is disengaged. Well, rather, rather, so we look at the problems of disengagement, we learn nothing about engagement, nothing about contribution. We also now know now, particularly from the Gallup research, but from our own work at the emotional economy at work, that the people who are engaged, the contributors, and you've got contributors, even you have been contributing, in fact, you are a contributor. I'd love to see you contribute even more. I'd love to see you be able to work more to your strengths as a CEO. I'd love to see your people engaged to work to their strengths because here's what we know now. The single biggest factor in engaging a workforce to take the journey to the future of work is to, is to discover their unique individual strengths as individuals and to engage tools and processes that allow those strengths to be experienced by them and the business for the benefit of the business for most of the time. So we deploy a strengths-based approach to installing the future of work. Not about problems, but about strengths. So the journey uh, with your people starts with a conversation uh, and a process around discovering individual strengths. We know this now. We didn't know it until a few, few years ago. Great work by Mark, Marcus Buckingham and, and other guys around this idea that there's a set of natural strengths that each of us has as individuals. They're hardwired into us from the time this we're seven years old. Did you know that? And they're highly correlated with outstanding levels of contribution um, and engagement at work with great outcomes to the bottom line. The people who are most engaged, most set up for, for, for the future of work, most ready to collaborate are those who get to work to their strengths for most of the time. Do you know what your strengths are as an individual? Do you know what the strengths are of your people? What if, what if the strengths of your people uh, were, were being unleashed for most of the time? What if they were aligned with the strengths of others in, in a new way of doing work together? So the first thing that I do, and I, I'm doing again practically, here's the very first thing I do. I deploy an incredible technology that's available now called Business DNA Behaviour, developed by a guy called Lee Ellis, who's a colonel in the US Navy. Um, in parallel to the work with Gallup, uh, but, but DNA behaviour is an extraordinary tool that allows you to identify the individual talents of your people. It allows you then to bring uh, those people together as a core group or the whole organisation together in the room to really deep dive around strengths and to appreciate them. And then to have a conversation around how can we deploy those strengths, practically such as, for example, one third of people are naturally wired around innovation, right? Cool. Uh, and some of those are, are, are wired more than 98, 99% of the population. If you've got guys like that, that's incredible. Do you know that? Are those people, are those strengths being utilised? How can they be utilised more? And then you've got another third of people who are the opposite. These guys are what we call experience based. They're not into innovation, they're into continuous improvement. By continuous improvement, I mean they, they've invested in something and they want to continue it. So you come in with an idea about changing your company or changing the direction of where you're going and you wonder why half the people in the room are pushing back because, because they're afraid of letting go of the past. Not because every individual is afraid, afraid of letting go of the past, that's not true, that's a myth. But at least one third, in fact one third of people are wired around innovation, one third around continuous improvement or uh, experience based and the other third are adaptive which means they have both. Just, just bringing people in the room with that kind of conversation, that kind of knowledge, opens up a whole new way in which you can see your people. And then reorganise the work in ways that um, allow the best to come out of people. One third of people are naturally wired around relationships, one third around results, one third are adaptive. Bringing that conversation is incredible. And then saying, who, who, who are the guys that have got these amazing talents around relationships? And those that are into relationships will naturally collaborate. You can't enforce collaboration or co-creativity, you've got to build it, and you build it from your strengths. So the first thing we do is deploy this incredible technology we've got now to identify strengths. The first time I deployed this, deployed this was not in the world's biggest innovation company, whatever that was or is. The first time I deployed the DNA behaviour was with a trucking company, a fast, a freight forwarding company here in Australia, in Tasmania. 
and, and it was the truck drivers, it was the semi drivers, it was the forklift drivers, it was the only clerks that we put through this pro process. They identified their strengths and we found something extraordinary. There were some talents in there that we didn't know they had. With a short period of time, the work was being reorganised to bring out the best of those people. It just in that one process alone, and the things that come out of it, within four months that business turned around from struggling to a profit maker. And so that was the first thing we did, an inventory around strengths. That would be the very first thing I would encourage you guys to do. Check out the DNA behaviour process with us. It's, it's quite simply an incredibly powerful experience and immediate um, benefit to the company. And then from that we moved to stage two. Uh, part of that, by the way, is that, is that when we bring people together as a team uh, around strengths, we have, it develops an authentic conversation. It allows people to be who they are. And opens up new insights into appreciating each other, which leads to incredible new level of trust and authentic uh, teamwork. And then we move into phase two, which is what we call the appreciative inquiry phase. Appreciative inquiry is the way in which we do innovation. And appreciative inquiry brings together a bunch of people across the organisation. It might be the whole organisation, in the case of the mushroom farm, 40 people. It might be a, 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 sm a smaller number in the case of, 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 a, of a, a utility, a water utility we worked with last year. Then a couple of thousand people, we brought two or three hundred together in a room for a couple of days, or one day, or half a day. Most people are saying, how do I get my guys off, off the shop floor for a period of time? We can sort that out, that's no big deal. But we get people off for a period of time, and we, we use what's called the appreciative inquiry, uh, which is the process, which is the best large group conversation and innovative process available today in the world. And that does four things. It has a conversation around discovering our strengths. We talked about discovering our strengths and extending our strengths as individuals. Now we move to the, to the idea of what is it in your organisation that you do really well. And, and so we focus on strengths. We look for the best of something, not the worst. We all know that there are disengaged staff. We all know that there are unhappy customers. Okay, let's be honest, let's bring it out the table. There are times when your customers have got really annoyed with you. There are times when your staff are doing the wrong thing and you think, wow, will it ever change? That's the problem. I want you to turn your thinking now to a different question. I want you to imagine the time when you, you, when you have experienced the best customer service that your company has ever given. I want you to imagine the time when you personally have seen something your company did or your guys did that was exceptional, and I mean exceptional. That somehow it, 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 it brought out the very best of who you are and your values and what you do as an organisation, as an enterprise, that no one else in the world at its best, at your best, can do. I want you to imagine that, think about that story. It's good, isn't it? thinking about that because it's, it means that you can do it, it means that it's real, it means that that's who you are. And in the priest inquiry, we actually focus on what works and we look for what's called the exceptional best. So, and every single person in your organisation has a story deep within them about personal, their, their best personal experience of working in the company. Did you know that? If you've got a hundred people, there's a hundred stories waiting to be released around their, uh, their, their view of what company A, B and C is at its best. So we bring those stories together. It's a powerful experience. Anyone can participate. Um, farm labourers, um, recently um, African Somali uh, farm labourers in a room with Thai, Thai uh, 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 young Thai students going to university picking mushrooms in their spare time in the same room together with sophisticated scientists and the owners of the business discovering their best. What is it that made the mushroom farm the best? What is it? How does it happen? How does it happen and why? And from that, they discover what's called the positive core. And it was brilliant, it was so easy, so easy, such good, beautiful work, easy to do, fun to do, so powerful. And then they co-created. We asked them a question three years from now, the best of who you are, the best of your mushrooms, the best of, of your enterprise has become the norm. What you've, what you've dared to imagine has come true. In fact, in three years' time, here's a question for you. In three years' time, your company, your enterprise has grown and it continues to grow and something amazing has happened. 
in three years' time, in fact, even two years' time, because the pace of life is happening so fast now, I'll just say two years' time, two years' time, the story of your business is now going viral on social media. Everybody in the world is talking about, in your space, is talking about you guys. Something has clicked. You're the number one trending story on social globally, on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. It is amazing. What is that story? It's how you took the strengths, how you switched the conversation and the culture from your business, from the problem, <coughs> excuse me, from the problem and the firefighting to a new conversation around what's possible together. And you reimagine the future of your company through the future of work by bringing your people together in a conversation around your strengths. And that's what an appreciative inquiry summit is. So the first thing of business DNA behaviour, individual strengths discovery, leads to a powerful, powerful, immediate release of your people's strengths. It leads to authentic conversation and it leads then to the ability to set you up to collaborate in an appreciative inquiry summit to co-create the future of work. That's number two. And the third thing, just to finish up here, is that we're now, you're now in a position in those summits, because in those summits they're designed they design um, summits. In that summit, you come together and you co-create, you design the future, what it will look like. Your people actually work with you to design what this will look like in our work. It's incredibly powerful, it's incredibly engaging, and it's amazing, and it's innovative. And at that point, because people are fired up, because they, because they own the process, because they get to be who they are, at that point in those summits, what we do then is that we introduce the digital tools introduce the social business tools, we introduce the, the, the ideas around big data and, 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 and doing more uh, by bringing more into the room by way of data and, and the marvellous technologies around digital and social collaboration. It's at that point we say, how can these new technologies work within the context of your unique business, with this unique conversation, with your guys doing this right now, can you see new ways in which that data can, can, can give you insights into, into creating new, new forms of social value and social good, expanding your business, expanding your market, expanding your influence? That is the right order in which to bring these things in. That is the future of work. And it's at that point that the technologies and the, uh, the various tools are explored and fit into what is the right order, which is creating your future story first and then um, supporting it. So what the third thing does, what social does, what digital does, it is enable your story to be told and affected at scale. Yeah. But what most people do now is they're starting with the big scale picture first and most people can't swallow it. We've got to take people with us, guys. We've got to take people from who we are. So, 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 so here's what... I'm suggesting. Here's what I'm suggesting. We need more stories in Australia for what I call inside out. So the process I've just described now, where you start with individual strengths, you start with your unique business strengths as, the, as a unique enterprise, you move into pressure to inquiry summits where you co-create the future and innovate new forms of social good using digital and, and big data uh, stuff that's available, and then sustained through the collaborative software. That's what we call an inside out approach to doing business and the, and the future of work is inside out and it starts with the heart and the individual first and it extends to the head, individual to corporate and if you do that, and if you start that way, you're going to see an extraordinary transformation in your business. I would love to work with you. I'd love to work with you and your guys. If you're still with me at this point in time, I'd love to talk with you. I hope that's been of some, some, some use and please go on our website, there's some stuff at the end of the video here. But what I'd love to do more than anything else is for you to give us a call and we'll have a chat about your unique business, your journey, who you are, who you are and it will be a pleasure to meet you. Have a good day.